What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Today on the show, we're going to talk a little bit about spring football. We're just over a month away from it likely happening. They haven't set an official date, but it should be around the middle of March when that happens. We'll talk a little bit about some of the schedule changes that have just recently happened. Of course, a lot of coaching changes with Arkansas staff, so we'll discuss some of that. We'll get into some recruiting with Danny West as well, and of course, we're going to talk about this Kentucky game coming up on Tuesday. All that and more on Hog Sports Live. Also, go ahead and get your questions in if you haven't done so already. Before we get started, I want to remind you, of course, there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Throw us a like if you haven't done so already and you like the content that we provide. Share it with somebody you think might like it. Also available on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. And also, feel free to share that, please, as well. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us that five-star rating and leave a review if you like the show. Let other people know what they can expect. Available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. I want to remind everybody also to sign up for our free VIP text alerts and our newsletter. Both are great ways to get Razorback information. Text alerts we'll send anytime there's breaking news. You'll get a text alert about it and a link back to uh, the article if you want to read more about it. Also on our newsletter, we send that off every morning. It's all of our free content. We might have put a couple of VIP articles in there, but about 70% of it is going to be free Razorback news. uh, And we'll also send any breaking news also available in your inbox. And it's easy to cancel either of those if you decide you don't want it but you're going to be glad you had it you'll stay ahead of your friends uh, with all the latest Razorback content so Hog Sports also just one dollar right now for your first month if you want to sign up which we encourage you to do because spring football is on the horizon and it's going to be exciting we didn't get to have it last year did we it sucked I'll tell you what else sucks Julius Coates is in the transfer portal you know it was like a month ago Coates was interacting on this show he was in the in the feed saying whoop pig suey and stuff and and indicated that he was coming back obviously and of course things have changed and he has entered the transfer portal uh, that makes it a little bit more important i think uh, just to add an older grad transfer defensive line which arkansas didn't do during the early signing period it was i mean that was it, it's never happened that arkansas excuse me the late signing period it's never happened that arkansas hasn't signed anybody in february at all Ended up with the 24-ranked recruiting class in the country. But uh, I think you're going to see maybe post-spring some more guys enter the portal, uh, guys that maybe need this semester, maybe go through the spring, maybe have a new coach, uh, and then they enter the portal and you see a lot of activity over the summer. So I think if Arkansas is going to add anybody on the defensive line in the portal, I think it will happen post-spring generally. Because there just had not been a lot of activity otherwise. So let's take a look at some of these new coaches real quick. On the defensive line, speaking of, Jermile Ashley. We've talked about him, obviously, a little bit, but we haven't talked since it's all been uh, official. You know, the way this hire came about from talking with Sam Pittman – this was he was a little bit different than the other guys because he wasn't they didn't really know about Ashley. They went through video, studied guys, asked around, and that's how they came up with with Jermile Ashley. I've already talked a little bit about his background, you know, being in Tulsa, junior college. I'm not going to go over all that stuff again, uh, but that's kind of how he came about uh, in their pursuit of him. Now, when we look at the defensive line for Arkansas next year and heading into the spring, it's good to get Dorian Gerald back. Okay, that's a plus, and then losing Coates, obviously the minus. Heading into the season, I don't think Gerald had any intention of returning for another year, but he had so many injuries. Matteo Soli has played more hands with – more hands – has played more downs with a hand wrapped in a cast than he has without. Easily. Broke his hand both years. I think that he's got more – I mean, this is a guy that had like 25 – sacks as a high school senior and he can't get to he can't get a single sack in college I I just think his best football is ahead of him I'd like to see him add more weight he goes 6'4 235 that should be a focus for him on the offseason adding weight and then in the season not breaking your hand Eric Gregory I think is a guy with a ton of potential 6'4 283 a guy really fits the mold as a three down lineman defensive end Maybe if they go four down line and you see him slide inside a little bit more. Zach Williams, I think, continues to get better. Deshaun Stewart's an interesting guy. A lot of people say, can this guy play linebacker? He's 6'2", 223, doesn't have exceedingly long arms. Not really built like a defensive end, but his mentality is defensive end. He is one speed. There's no slowing up. There's no patience. It's just one speed. He's an end or 
a 3-4 outside linebacker. One of the big reasons I think that we see him here, Jermyle Ashley, is because of defensive end. He's a former defensive end, former All-Big 12 performer. Arkansas can't seem to get any pressure with their ends. So I think that's why, and also the fact that Arkansas didn't sign any defensive ends in this recruiting class and, and needed to. So we'll see how he does that on the recruiting trail, but those are some of his ends. Of course, we didn't really touch on defensive tackle, but everybody's back except for Marshall and Xavier Kelly on the defensive tackle. You know, they've got some intriguing um, – I think Isaiah Nichols is a guy with a bright future at Arkansas. Marcus Miller, Andy Boykin, and there's some others. Got a JUCO addition coming in also. With Kenny Guyton, you know, this is a guy that Pittman said, Kendall Bryles figuratively, he didn't say figuratively, he just said he jumped on the table for him. Like, the, the reason that hire was made so fast is Pittman wanted to beat the portal. He didn't want anybody sitting around thinking, who's my coach going to be? Maybe I'll explore my options. So when Justin Stepp informed him that he was going to go talk to South Carolina, Pittman started looking. And Kendall Bryles was, we got to, basically, we got to hire Kenny Guyton. And so that's how that happened. And so two hours after the news of Justin Stepp leaving for South Carolina, the Kenny Guyton news floated out there. I hear he's been a good hit with the players. He's got a really talented roster. I love that he noted that, that, hey, Justin Stepp left some really talented wide receivers. A lot of coaches won't give anybody any credit like that. But he did. I mean, uh, obviously it starts with, uh, with Traylon Burks, who's an exceptional talent, all SEC performer. They got to get Trey Knox back on track. Definitely had a sophomore slump. Got to get him back on track, continue Mike Woods on the path that he's been on, get Debbie on Warren back, which is a nice addition. He, he had his best season easily. You got some young guys, Darren Turner. You got four freshmen coming in. A couple of those guys are really, really highly regarded. It's a good-looking room. Maybe the best-looking room. Maybe the best-looking room. I like Cody Kennedy. I like Cody Kennedy. I liked his energy. You know, he's he's had an interesting path because he coached Division Two. You know, he, he spent a lot of time as a grad assistant all over. Uh, finally, I think got his real break going to Georgia. But before that, you know, in 2015, he was he was coaching D2 ball. 2000, I think 16, something like that. He was coaching D2 ball and then went grad assistant at Georgia, which you don't usually see that path. So it's a little kind of backwards, but. Um, that connection with Sam Pittman, he's got a lot of characteristics, I think, with Sam. Seems like an easy guy to talk to based on the interview that I had. And he's got some talent, too. He's, he's thin, Hudson Henry, Blake Kern. Uh, and then past that, you know, you got Aaron Outley, Colin Sutherland. You're thin at tight end, which is probably another reason that he's here. They could have used a nice-looking tight end in the last class to go with Aaron Outley, I think. Not just one, but two, or, or maybe something in the transfer portal or something. But it's a thin position. And really probably the year before that, you know, because they did get Outley in this last class. So I think they would have gotten Outley no matter what. I'm not, I'm not no matter what, but almost no matter what, because he is an Arkansas guy. But the class before that, they didn't get any tight ends. And they lost two of them that were previously committed on the other staff. And I, I think that's one reason Cody Kennedy's here. I thought he made a nice uh, statement about the four coaches – Coaching, coaching tight ends in the AFC and NFC championship games are all former offensive line coaches. He's young. I'm not saying anybody shouldn't be concerned that these guys are young because they should be. But I have said before I'd rather have a young, energetic coach than a older, rest-on-his-laurels coach like Arkansas has had. But I like a veteran coordinator, obviously, which Arkansas has in both spots. We'll see. Obviously, the best of both worlds is to get an experienced guy who's not scared of a computer and has a lot of energy. Eric Musselman is kind of a guy like that in a lot of ways. He's got some plans for Arkansas's tight ends. I like a lot what, a Kennedy, what Kennedy had to say. Michael Scherer came in after a workout, could barely breathe, was sweating the whole time. He's a young guy working out with the team. He's a 2016 graduate at Missouri. I don't know if he graduated that year, but that was his last year playing towards ACL and everything. But he's a guy that's been on staff – Again, another guy that they're very familiar with. They're 
Pittman or, or his coaches or somebody was familiar with everybody except for Jermile Ashley. He was, he's kind of the outsider in that regard. But Arkansas has got some veteran linebackers, obviously. Hayden Henry coming back. Grant Morgan coming back. Bumper pool returning, of course. But there's some other guys that you have to start moving up. Some, you know, a Zach Zymus, Andrew Parker, Kellen Burrell, Chris Paul, Marco Avant, you know, those freshmen. You know, some of these guys have to start really – being able to contribute for you. You can't just play Grant Morgan 90% of the snaps till he's, he can barely hold his arm up. Same thing with Bumper. Now you've also got um, oh, Oklahoma transfer. Why is he escaping my mind? Hmm. Skip my mind. But anyway, he's, <laughs> he's coming back too. He didn't play last year because of an injury. So that's where things stand with Arkansas's new coaches. I want to touch on this stadium stuff real quick. We're going to have Danny West come in here in about 10 minutes or so. But the stadium stuff was obviously needed. Arkansas was at a competitive disadvantage from, for a lot of reasons. Recruiting was a big one, and I think that's ultimately why you saw these moves made. Now, obviously, we've talked about having to pack up for a home game and go to Little Rock, okay? It's not that big a deal. It's not all your home stuff. You are the home team. you got the home crowd and all that stuff, and that's great. I think that they made the right solution because you need that connection to remain with Central Arkansas. Central Arkansas is important. You can't put it on paper how it's important. It's just important. It's important to bond the state together. I do think that we have reached a point, though, where the world is so much smaller that the idea of not playing other in-state schools – is more mitigated it's not as important not to do that back in the day I think it was but I think it makes sense if you're going to have a meaningful game and you're not going to put Arkansas at some disadvantage I mean Arkansas should beat Arkansas State every year they're not going to every year there'll be years where something crazy happens and, and Arkansas State will win and I think that's a scare for a lot of Arkansas fans and the University of Arkansas John Barnhill and um, you know Frank Broyles and all that stuff but it makes sense if you're going to continue that game in Little Rock to have somebody that somebody's going to be interested in. And they'll be interested in it to a degree in UAPB. I mean, just because it's UAPB, it's an in-state school. But it's not going to be anything the same. And from a financial standpoint, I mean, you're going to – you've got a better chance of filling up War Memorial Stadium against UAPB than you do filling up Razorback Stadium, which is 76000 compared to about 50000 So – it makes sense from a financial standpoint to move Missouri up there from a competitive standpoint to not just have – like the way the schedule worked out la next year, you were going to have like a three-week period where you would have SEC games. You would have, I believe, Auburn, and then you're away, and then you come back and it's uh, uh, it's uh, Mississippi State or something like it, maybe the other way around. But – and that was it. This short little window – for SEC games in Fayetteville, and now, you know, that expands. You, you've got that last weekend, um, the post-Thanksgiving weekend. So, I think that needed to happen. Um, again, I think you needed the presence in Little Rock. I don't mean to say that playing games in Little Rock is a competitive disadvantage, but it is a lot of ways. Not other SEC schools have to pack up and do that. And in those odd number of years, you've got to go to Arlington as the home team, and you've got to go to Little Rock as the home team. Okay, that, that wipes out two games in Fayetteville. And it's big for recruiting. That's the most important part of this. It's big for recruiting because you only get a few opportunities to bring recruits into Fayetteville. And there are so many things that can affect that. You could have really crappy weather. You could get an 11 a.m. kickoff. Or some of the recruits you really want to come They've got away games. They're in Dallas. They've got a game that's away. You know, they got to bus back after the game. Are they going to get up for, you know, 11 o'clock game? Probably not in Fayetteville, you know. I mean, think about how early you got to leave Dallas to make it, and then you don't want to just show up at 11. You want to show up early enough and maybe say something to a coach or, you know, a, a recruiting personnel person. But, um, yeah, so you want to have as many opportunities in Fayetteville as possible. You've also got the Texas game early in the year, which would be nice. So, just a few opinions. Keep the presence in Little Rock. Time to start playing Arkansas State. Other in-state schools, obviously. They got two against UAPB. Both of those will be in Little Rock. Okay. 
I want to get over to Danny West now, see if he's ready. But um, for those of you who don't follow Danny West, does a great job. Don't pay attention to that Twitter handle. I keep meaning to update it. I forget every time until I see it, but it's at Danny West 247 now. It's not uh, Danny West 1. It's Danny West 247. Danny, most of his content is VIP, so if you want insider recruiting information like what happened this weekend, then you're going to want to sign up at hogsports.com for $1 for your first month. Trey Bishop. What's up, Danny? How you doing, man? Oh. Uh, oh? No. <laughs> Did we lose you? Update. Okay. I, I lost you for a second, Danny. What did you say? All I heard was all. Yeah, just licking my wounds from uh, the Super Bowl. Yeah, Danny is a is a Chiefs fan. I was rooting the Chiefs, Danny. I was rooting for you. I've been to a couple Chiefs games. I've actually the Chiefs games that I went to. I went and saw Matt Jones his rookie year, and I saw Darren McFadden his rookie year. So yep. I've been to two Chiefs games, but I haven't been in a while. Obviously, it's been over ten years ago. But um, yeah, that was a tough one, Danny. That was a uh, yeah. I mean. Uh, we were due for that type of – we've had a pretty good run, Trey. So yeah. we were due for, for a big letdown like that. But, hey, we'll be back. feel pretty confident in that. Yeah, we'll I think back. I don't think you have to worry about that. Right. Yeah. So, Danny, I want to change gears with you real quick. Arkansas, um, I mean, it's kind of weird. Like, these are big deals that – you know, these virtual visit weekends. What, uh, what can you tell us about what happened this weekend? Yeah, a whole bunch of studs. Uh, took part in this one. I think that was the third weekend in a row that they've hosted these things. And, you know, it's it's been a hit for them so far. You you get a chance. Obviously, you can't bring kids to campus, so you kind of take the campus to them. And it gives them a, a, gives mom and dad a chance to see campus. I think that's really important. They take them on a basically a campus tour, show them a little bit about the surrounding area, uh, you learn more about the academic side mm-hmm. and uh, strength and conditioning, nutrition center, all those good things. So you're basically cramming a junior day type visit into a Zoom call. So a uh, condensed version of it. But, man, they had a really good group this past weekend. People can check out all the names on the site, but several four stars. And then a lot of the unranked guys will probably end up four stars if I had to guess. Uh, you know, just looking at their offer list, it, it would make sense that they will be. So mm. anybody in particular you want to know about? Oh, no, I was just uh, just letting everybody know, I guess, about about the weekend. I mean, there's – like you said, there's several, you know, four-star type players, and you've got um, – you got breakdowns with you know how the visits went with several of those guys, and of course the list of of the guys that we know that were, were participating in that. But I, I just wanted to change gears, and people, again, that's VIP you know uh, content. So if you if you like that kind of stuff, you can sign up for one dollar at Hog Sports. But I wanted to transition you over to real quick to uh, the recruiting territories with these new coaches. What what have you learned so far about? I mean, I think some of it's obvious based on their backgrounds, but what have you learned so far? Yeah, I was curious what they were going to do in Oklahoma, to be honest with you, when you uh, dismiss or part ways, whatever we want to call it, with John Cooper. You know, I felt like he had he had made some inroads there. He's from the state. Mm-hmm. I think he did a pretty good job in Oklahoma, in my personal opinion. So I was curious about that. And, of course, uh, you kind of took care of that with Coach Ashley coming in. Uh, you know, he spent so much time in Tulsa. He's got a connection with a lot of those particular recruits. And then – you know, pretty uh, a pretty good name throughout the state, from what we understand. So, uh, I was impressed with that. Of course, you know, just as a general thought, all of these guys are so young. You know, you look at their even their picture, and you're like, holy crap, they're young. So, I think that's a good thing. To be honest with you, you know, Sam Pittman is obviously uh, he's really big on that, being an ener- energetic dynamic type recruiter Mm -hmm. and uh he's got several of them now but um in the state of oklahoma i was really impressed there of course michael sharer is going to have a lot of st louis ties uh throughout the state of missouri and then of course what you lose with Derek leblanc you kind of pick up uh with a couple of guys in in louisiana with uh coach kennedy right Mm -hmm. coming from tulane he's he's an alabama guy he's got mississippi ties um, you know, I, they covered their bases, didn't really lose anything. And, um, 
uh, Kenny Guyton, of course. Uh, I failed to mention him, but Houston ties, Dallas ties there, so you took care of that as well. Juco ties also. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But or that's you know, actually that's right actually up. with uh, uh, Ashley, I believe he he's the more oh, the, Juco. The Juco. Guy. Uh, Guyton yeah. is uh, Houston. Houston. I was impressed with them last week on that on that Zoom call. Were you? Mm. I think they they all yeah. four made a really good impression. So I think we'll they did. Well that translates. I, I was talking sure. about that a little bit. Like Cher came in, like kind of out of breath after a workout. Um, and Ashley, you know, I thought Ashley did a good job. I thought Guyton did a real good job, and Kennedy was just, you know, he kind of reminded me of, you know, he's different than Sam, but he kind of reminded me like because it was, I felt like the conversation was one that we were, you know. Like we've been talking already, you know, kind of. Yeah. Like yeah. He's, that kind of deal. Like we're yeah. familiar with each other, you know. So yeah. I thought he did a good job in his interview. That's typically a really good sign, is it not? When you feel like you know somebody. Yeah. For that's the first time that's how you want it to be. So, Danny, right. spring football's coming up here March 15th or so. Have you heard anything about the possibility of letting recruits start to actually visit in person and, and lifting this absurd dead period. Is that, is that happening? Is that on the horizon? I think so, Trey, but I think we're still looking at mid April, Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, you would be what several weeks into spring ball towards the end of it, I guess. I mean, they've Uh, they've got to allow an evaluation period this year, don't they? I mean, at least that, I mean, it's not like, you know, with evaluation periods, it's not like the coaches can, um, well, I guess it's up to the schools too because schools are pretty strict. Like I can't, I haven't been inside my daughter's school all year, but I mean, you know, you don't have like a lot of interaction on these evaluation trips. But you, you would yep. think that surely they're going to allow them to have a spring evaluation period. You would hope so. I mean, it's, it's you know we went all season bringing in what seventeen and a half mm-hmm. thousand fans uh, to the stadium, and I'm thinking, well, why can't a recruit come? You know, yeah. I mean, if they're going to follow protocols, wear your uh, socially distance, wear your mask, all these things, mm-hmm. what are we even doing? Like, uh-huh. that, where is that opportunity going to come from? So eventually, yeah, to answer your question, I think they're about to uh, – I think they're going to lessen that a little bit. So. I think I think there was Hopefully definitely so. a period of people being over – not over cautious on stuff, but we didn't really know what we were getting into, you know? That's right. And so I think there were a lot of policies that were set and maybe looking back now, knowing everything that we know now, maybe this would have been okay to do or, or, or that, you know, so. Well, yeah, it's challenged now. Um, think, you know, I look around uh, mm-hmm. Twitter all the time and, and so many kids at other schools are having visitors on campus. They, you know, obviously can't have direct contact with the coach, but mm-hmm. we're seeing more of that now where kids just say, you know, screw it. I'm going to drive to campus and ride around for a little yeah. bit. And, and uh, take it upon myself to have a, a junior day of sorts. So, dude, it was yeah. it was crazy with Pittman talking about all the guys that had enrolled early. I think Arkansas had thirteen early enrollees out of the last sure. recruiting class, and like meeting a lot of them for the first time face to face and being That's like, nuts. you know, oh, you're you're a little bigger than we thought you were going to be. You know, it's crazy, like, insane. Yeah, that's crazy. I tell you, there's going to be a lot of misses, and I don't mean yeah. just for Arkansas, but with that, and I kind of alluding to what he said there, you're going to find out some guys are, are better, too, right. than what you, what I you would, may have thought. I would so. think that we see more freshman transfers this year than, than yeah. ever. Also, it's, not not at Ar- I'm not saying like at Arkansas, but I'm saying sure. you know country, across, across the country. The just because these, you know, this is the most important decision that they've ever made, and they're less informed on this decision than anybody has been in the internet age. Yeah, it's going to be a mess, but you know, we got to get visits back and Mm -hmm. and I'm with you on evaluations. They've got to allow that because at some point, man, you're going to be missing a lot, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) striking out on a lot of these guys. So hopefully we'll see that soon. All right, Danny. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for jumping on. We'll see you. All right. That's Danny West again. You can follow Danny West at, at Danny West 247 does a great job read up on his uh, recruiting information all his updates and of course um, we're hoping that that's about to lift and we're about to see some actual visitors on campus and the coaches actually being able to go in May and you know evaluate prospects we're thinking so probably sometime around March 15th for the start of spring football fingers crossed on that but that's the hope I think
So this was great, y'all. I got to play this video. This is Eric Musselman. Um, this was Saturday. We and because the basketball game against Texas A and M was canceled, which I don't know if they're uh, Texas A and M has like four games they've got to make up. So I, I don't think this game is getting made up. They've got like a week before the SEC tournament, so I guess maybe they get an opportunity to get two games in, maybe. We don't even know how the rest of the schedule is going to shake out, but to me, this one seems like a little bit of a long shot uh, that Arkansas is going to get to play. But I loved what Eric Musselman said. In fact, when he was, he kind of went on a little bit of a rant about, you know, playing as much as possible. You know, why did we push the season back, all this stuff? And it made me feel like how I would feel like going on a tangent when I'm doing the walk and talk or something. Anyway, let's go to the video. Hey, Coach, slightly off topic, but still relevant. I've, I've seen a couple of reports since last night about the SEC kind of planning to move ahead with the conference tournament as as normal. Uh, I know there's been a lot of debate as to, you know, whether or not those should happen or what the format should look like, if teams might opt out. I was just curious what your thoughts were on all that and, and kind of where you stand. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, Curtis, that um... – I want to play the, I, you know, I wish we had 30 games instead of 27 by the NCAA. I wish we would have started on time and not pushed it back. I don't know what pushing it back did. I, mean, I have no idea. Football was playing. I mean, what's why, why was it pushed back? I mean, I have no idea. Other sports are playing. All of a sudden we decide we're going to push it back two weeks for what? Um, so I think we owe it to the student athletes to have uh, as much normalcy as we can to play as many games as we can. Um, there's players across the country that, that came back to play college basketball and, and, and didn't go pro to, to play on a platform. And, and so it's deserving for them uh, to, to have a conference tournament because that's part of college basketball. Um, I'm glad we're having one. I, you know, I, we're looking forward to participating in it. Um, again, I think everybody, like, I want to play today, you know, and so certainly I want to, you know, I want our players to be able to play in a, in a conference tournament. Don't take that intensity intensity in that answer personally, Curtis. Oh, no, not at all. I, I know it's been a hot topic. <laughs> everybody knows how Eric Musselman feels. He's one of those guys that everybody knows how he feels. And on Saturday during that interview, I felt like we were talking to a guy who had just lost a game. So, like, Eric Musselman winning a game very high, losing a game can be very low. I mean, can be just pissed off. And not being able to play a game, also pissed off. Maybe not quite as much, but pissed. <laughs> All right. This is – so, Arkansas on SEC power rankings on 24-7 sports, Arkansas has moved to fourth. They were sixth last week. So, basically – they didn't even have to do anything to move up to fourth. They moved ahead of LSU, moved ahead of Florida, who they haven't played Florida yet and got blown out by LSU. But Arkansas is 6-4 and four right now. Based on wins, they are tied for second. They're technically tied for third because um, I believe Missouri's 6-3 and three and Arkansas is 6-4 and four, tied with a bunch of others. But if they had played Texas A&M on Saturday and won, you know, They'd have seven wins. They'd been alone in second place behind Alabama. But Arkansas is fourth right now in power rankings. Tennessee's third, Missouri's two, and Alabama is one, even though they just lost. Some injury notes. Arkansas is obviously banged up. A lot of people think that maybe this was a good opportunity for Arkansas to get a little bit of a rest, seven days, because, you know, you've got guys that are kind of going up and down, up and down. Justin Smith not practicing through the week. Moses Moody uh, injured his ankle last time out. Desi Stills can barely lift his arm up. He's just like shooting one-foot baskets. Is that everybody? Justin, Jalen Williams got a knee bruise issue. So maybe it's good that they get a little bit of a break, but obviously Musselman wanted to play. I think Arkansas had enough to, to still beat Texas A&M in that one. But maybe long term, it's good to go get a little break. Arkansas is 29 right now in the net rankings. Kim Palm has them 26. USA Today, Sagarin has them 23rd. <laughs> Sagarin. Um, ESPN BPI has them 23. Kentucky's 72 in the BPI and similar 80 in the net. 
this is a weird year for Kentucky. They're not used to to playing so poorly. Keon Brooks was a guy that was only played in eight games last year, sophomore, leads away with 11.8 points, six rebounds per game. Oliver, Oliver Saar, seven foot, 237, Wake Forest transfer, 10.5 points, 5.5 rebounds per game. Isaiah Jackson is a 6'10 freshman, 6'4 points per game, 6.4 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, 48 blocks. Brandon Boston, 6'7 wing, 11.6 points per game. Davion Mintz and redshirt freshman Damian Dante Allen are the perimeter threats, best perimeter threats. And Devin, Devin Askew leads the team with 51 assists as freshman point guard. You can read more about Arkansas basketball through Curtis Wilkerson, who does a great job. And he'll be covering the Kentucky game on Tuesday, and he'll be back with you guys for Hog Hoops Live on Wednesday to discuss the Kentucky game. And then, of course, look ahead to Missouri against Colum- uh, excuse me, Missouri in Columbia on Saturday, February thirteenth, three p.m. Kentucky games at six o'clock on Tuesday. Kentucky is five and twelve overall, <laughs> four and six in SEC play. Isn't that crazy? Moses Moody, there's also a list of the top 10 freshmen in the country that came out on 24-7 Sports, and Moses Moody ranks seventh. If you Google CBS Sports' top 10 college basketball freshmen, you'll be able to find that article. All right, we're going to jump over to your questions here in the next 10 minutes or so. Mike Metheny, Metheny says, love the show, Trey. You're awesome. Appreciate that. I'm happy about the Arkansas State game. Can't wait for spring bowl. Randy Hilliard says, why are we losing so many coaches and now one of our best defensive players? I read a headline a few days ago that leaned towards Sam Pittman, Pittman being to blame. Well, I mean, the one coach, Justin Stepp left for South Carolina. Okay, guy was born in Columbia. His family all lives around there. So, I mean, you can't really blame him for going home. But the other moves were Pittman. I mean, Pittman basically fired Ryan Rhodes, Derek LeBlanc, and uh, John Cooper and replaced him with guys that he felt could recruit better. I think that was the ultimate reason he was just disappointed in the recruiting. So those are moves that Sam Pittman made. Julius Coates, I mean, Julius Coates has been back and forth, back and forth. You know, he wasn't with the team towards the end of the year. Um, Then, you know, he was kind of cryptic, but indicating that he's coming back. And then next thing you know, he enters the portal. So he's kind of been back and forth, back and forth. So Sam Pittman to blame, I don't know why. I don't know why we would say Sam Pittman's to blame. I mean, he's blame he's to blame because he fired the coaches. Bush Joyner says Sam said on Fine Bomb we had twenty starters returning. Anyone in the SEC have as many? So Butch, not everybody I don't think has kept up at the same rate we have with seniors that are returning, but Arkansas has a lot of seniors returning. So I would be surprised, first of all, if anybody has that many. But secondly, nobody from what we can tell has as many scholarship seniors returning as Arkansas. I believe ten returning scholarship seniors. So that's a big reason Arkansas has 20. Without that, without those guys returning, they'd only have 10. Colton Smith, hey, Trey, do you think it's it's this is Burks' last year? I think there's a strong possibility this is Burks' last year, yeah. I mean, he was all SEC last year. He puts together another year, builds on what he did last year with the name recognition, his speed, size, catching ability, all that stuff. He's – yeah, I think there's, there's a, definitely a chance. Rocky Carter says, any news on a makeup game with A&M? Not right now. Now, Arkansas plays Texas A&M on February 20th um, at Bryan College Station. But, I mean, I guess they'll have two opportunities maybe the week before. There's like an open week before the SEC tournament starts that I imagine they're going to try and schedule games. But Texas A&M has a lot of games to make up. So, it's difficult to say if they'll get that one. It it stinks because, I mean, like, you know, why couldn't you miss the, you know, (laughs) the Alabama game? Why couldn't that be the game you missed? Not Texas A&M. You want to play Texas A&M this year. Chad Young said, that, did the JUCO guy that is leaving get in – oh, you got two minutes – into trouble? He was going to be big. I, 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 I don't know the exact details. I think there was maybe some issues away from football. I'm not saying like bad issues, but, I mean, I think there maybe he had some stuff that maybe he was dealing with. Isaac Riley says, what's up, Trey? Hope you're well. Love the content from all the Hogs sports. Can't wait to see baseball start in next football season. Appreciate that. Sign up if you haven't signed up at hogsports.com. 
It's a place for a diehard Razorback fan. Some, some people got offended because I said I was questioning your fandom if you're not subscribed to Hog Sports. Like, I'm just joking, people. I mean, like, I think we do the best job out of anybody. If you're a diehard Razorback fan, why wouldn't you want the best content, the best insider information? That's all. Don't get your feelings hurt. Jared DeVore says the coaches were let go except for LeBlanc and Steph. Now, LeBlanc was let go. Losing coach was nothing to worry about. We'll end up – I mean, there's a – like, coaches handle things a different way instead of just, like, firing, unless they're trying to make a point, like Jeremy Pruitt fired his defensive line coach last year in the middle of the season. Unless they're trying to make some kind of point like that, um, a lot of times coaches will say, hey, let's, uh, let's find you – another option maybe you got till february one start looking for another job move on on your own and uh we won't have to do like a, you know you're fired type of thing but i don't know that any of these guys found another job i don't think leblanc is found one or cooper or i mean cooper stuff kind of came out um or uh ryan rhodes i don't know that they're have another another job right now yeah levi draper thanks mason mason cox Levi Draper is the name I was forgetting. He was hurt in the Georgia game and didn't play the rest of the way. Don Eldred said, I'm reading a book called The Paradox of Choice. It makes me wonder if having less information, X ante lessens the risk, regret, and reduce the number of freshman transfers. Maybe. <laughs> Pat Campbell says, go Razorbacks. Marco Giles says, Trey, the SWAC conference starts their six-game season this month. As an alum of UAPB, I'm excited for this and UAPB game and the UA game next year, this year. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, that's interesting to think about because they'll have a quick turnaround on next season. Aaron Stalling says, Burke's gone, have a good season. I told that boy he needs to take some of those wild hogs and be killing and feed it to all of his teammates, put some real hog in their life. Interesting, Aaron. Don Eldred says, oh, live, yay. Why can't the Razorback women's basketball team beat a ranked SEC team? Said Zachary Smith. Well, they can beat uh, they can beat UConn. How long are we going here? I aimed at about forty minutes. We're about thirty seven minutes. Anything else you guys want to talk about for the next three minutes? I like to go about forty at least, but we kind of covered through everything. I think these, you know, again, just to talk about the schedule a little bit more. Uh, moving forward, I, I really think it's it's something that you had to do. I just don't think that it makes a lot of sense for for Arkansas from a competitive situation to play two away games every other year. Now, the other years are are, are beautiful. I mean, you get Alabama at home, LSU at home, Ole Miss at home. Um, who else? Uh, who's the other team you get at home that year? You get well. You get a uh, you get a um, to be determined cross divisional team. Last year it was Georgia. I mean, I know it was Georgia added to the schedule, but it was Georgia anyway. So yeah, kind of how it works. No, is that right? It wasn't Georgia. It was Tennessee. Georgia was added. Georgia and Florida were added. Sorry, it's based on that. But Tennessee coming to Fayetteville. So. Um, what is the what does the schedule look like? What is the next cross divisional? Let's see here. Twenty twenty two football schedule for Arkansas. The cross divisional is South Carolina. South Carolina in Fayetteville. That's nice. It's been a while. That sh schedule shapes up pretty good. So you got a tough game against Cincinnati. Cincinnati's got a good program. You get Cincinnati on September 3rd to open the season. You get Bobby Petrino and the Missouri State Bears. If he's still there, Bobby Petrino will return to Fayetteville on Saturday, September 17th. That should be week three, so I'm guessing you'll get an SEC game slid in there somewhere. Then you got Texas A&M, 24th. BYU that year, that's your Power Five. They're not in the Power Five Conference. BYU and Notre Dame count towards that. So you get BYU on October 15th. Play Liberty. Hugh Freeze could still be there in 2022. That's an interesting schedule. 
Bobby Petrino, Hugh Freeze. Cincinnati's got a strong program. You're the away team in Arlington. And then you get Alabama at home, LSU at home, Ole Miss at home, and South Carolina at home. That's a nice schedule. It's a nice-looking schedule. Also, Missouri is at Missouri, but Missouri was going to play the game in Arrowhead. So they owe Arrowhead a home game. So it's possible that Arkansas plays Missouri in Arrowhead to end the season in 2022. That would be nice. That would be a nice-looking setup, wouldn't it? It's a nice schedule, 2022. All right, did we cover it? We got to 40 minutes. Any more questions? Anybody chime in with a question? Josh Smith says, always enjoy your show. Appreciate that. Don Eldred said, Bobby should ride his Harley into town. Damian and <laughs> – Damian N. Phillips says, who could have a potential breakout season at DLDE to replace Coates? Well, I still think Dorian Gerald. I mean, if Dorian Gerald can stay healthy, he's got a chance. I think Eric Gregory has a lot of ability. Soley does too, and Zach Williams keeps getting better. I mean, I think they've got a lot of potential guys there. Mike Matheny says, long oh, you're going to feel good, feeling on the Hogs-Texas game. Yeah, I mean, next season, week two, I believe they take to play Texas. Rice and then Texas, I think. That's how it shakes up. But, I mean, Texas got a new head coach. They'll have a new quarterback. It's a good time, I think, to catch Texas. All right, everybody. How many wins do I think the football team will have, says Nicholas Jacoby Hallman. I think uh, six would be kind of a wash, and I think seven would be another step forward because I think they would have won three non-conference games last year. All right, everybody, I want to thank Danny West for joining us, talking a little bit of recruiting stuff and big basketball game against Kentucky on Tuesday. Again, Curtis Wilkerson will be with you guys for Hog Hoops Live on Wednesday to discuss that Kentucky game and, then, of course, look ahead to the Missouri game. And uh, appreciate all you guys for jumping in, asking your questions. Uh, again, if you haven't thrown a review on Apple Podcasts, we would love to have that review from you. Just Throw us five stars and say something nice. Let people know what they can expect. And share. If you got a granddad or maybe an older dad or something or you know some guy that's not super familiar with the Internet but can do some basic stuff, so, uh, send them a link to the show. Let them, uh, let them check out the content, especially if they're a diehard Razorback fan. Uh, they're going to want to watch the show. All right, everybody. Appreciate you joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.